Hello everybody, welcome back to the Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore and I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, Revelation chapter 1, The Quiz. Revelation is one of those books that invite a lot of debate because it contains so much symbolism and end time events. I like to keep things simple though, okay? So today we're going to touch on Revelation chapter 1, but we're going to do it as a quiz. We're not going to go too in depth with prophecies and symbols, just some simple facts to get you started in the book of Revelation. So for instance, did you know that it was written by the apostle John sometime around 70 to 90 AD on an island that he was, he was exiled to? Now that time frame, 70 to 90 AD, this is still within the very first century. This is within the lifetime of Jesus himself and his apostles. Now, here's how this quiz is going to work. I'm going to give you the question, pause the video, look for the answer within Revelation chapter one, and then go ahead and resume the video to get the answer because the answer will come immediately following the question. Make sense? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, when people study the book of Revelations, mistakes are made. How many errors are in this sentence? This is where you pause. The answer is two mistakes. Number one, the book of Revelation has no S on it. It's not Revelations, it's Revelation, singular. And the second mistake is I misspelled steak, okay? Steak, I spelled it like the meat instead of mistake like it's supposed to be spelled. Pretty simple, right? Question number two, how many eyes will see Jesus when he returns? This is where you pause. The answer is every eye will see him according to Revelation chapter one, verse seven. But when you look at that passage, it says even those who pierced him will see him. Now hold the phone. Jesus is going to do it. He's going to return today or tomorrow or next week or next year. Sometime between now and the future is when he's going to return. The ones who pierced him, they died centuries ago right? Centuries ago. So how will those who pierced him see him when he comes either now or in the future? Simple. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 through 13 talks about a great resurrection of all the dead, no matter where they died or no matter when they died, all will be resurrected. Okay. And that's how all will see Jesus when he returns. Question number three. Who is the Alpha and the Omega? The answer is God, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. What is the Alpha and the Omega? What is that anyway? Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So it represents beginning and end, the beginning of the alphabet and the end of the alphabet. There's nothing before the first letter, and there's nothing after the final letter of the Greek alphabet. So this is another way of saying beginning and end, alpha and omega. Nothing came before and nothing will be after. It's an also another way to say eternal. Question number four, what was the name of the island that the apostle John was exiled to? Patmos, according to Revelation chapter one and verse nine. Question number five is going to be a true or false. Revelation was written on the Sabbath day, the holy day of God, according to Genesis chapter two, verse two through three. The answer is false. Revelation was written on the Lord's day, which is the first day of the week, what we call Sunday, according to Revelation chapter one and 10. Question number six is also a true or false. Revelation chapter one, verse 14 confirms Jesus was black due to his hair being described like wool. The answer is false. Revelation chapter one and verse 14 talks about the color of his hair, which is white, white like wool or white like snow. It does not talk about the texture. If the passage read it was white and like wool, put that and in there, that changes everything, then it would be the texture. But this passage is clearly saying white like wool, white as snow. It's talking about the color, not the texture. 
Question number seven, who is the first and the last? Jesus, according to Revelation 1, 17 through 18. Now, you might be asking, wait a minute, hold on. Doesn't the first and last mean beginning and the end? Yeah, it does. Isn't that the same as the Alpha and the Omega that we discussed earlier? Yeah, it does. Isn't this the identity of God the Father? Yes, it is. Does this mean that Jesus is God? Yes, it does. He is God the Son. God the Father is God also. This is the Trinitarian concept that we're going to be discussing in an upcoming video. But to confirm that this first and last is indeed Jesus, when you look at this passage, Revelation 1, 17 through 18, you'll see, I was dead and now I am alive. We know the Father has never died. Only the Son died. The Son put on flesh so he could die. And we see that in John chapter 1, verse 14. Do you want to confirm again that this is Jesus? When you look at Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13, it reads, I am the Alpha and the Omega, that's God the Father, the first and the last, we just read that as Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end, which is what all those mean. You, do you know who's talking in this passage? This is Jesus. Jesus is also the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. All those terms are synonymous. They are parallels with each other. Question number eight, who holds the keys to death and Hades? According to Revelation 1 verse 18, it is Jesus. Jesus holds the keys to death and Hades. Question number nine, what do the seven stars in the hands of Jesus represent from Revelation chapter 1 verse 16? The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches the book of Revelation was written to according to Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. Question number 10. What do the seven golden lampstands represent in Revelation chapter 1 verse 12? The seven golden lampstands represent the seven churches according to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20. So how did you do? Was it simple? Was it pretty difficult? How many did you get correct? How many did you get incorrect? Either way, this is just a quiz. Learn the technique that we're using. We're literally just taking one chapter of one book and we're reading it through. We're reading it through, trying our best to understand it, and then we're reading it again and again. We're starting to find the different references the chapter utilizes. It'll say one thing here and it'll reference someplace else. And then you look at the someplace else to be able to connect the dots and understand what the Bible is saying more and more. Pretty soon, you'll be doing that with not just one chapter, but two chapters and three chapters. And pretty soon, you'll be pretty good at an entire book of the Bible. It's not enough just to read the Bible. This is where the study comes in. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Stay tuned for the next video.